Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all safe and healthy. So today I'm here at Autoville or Saudi International Motor Show that is being held here in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, I think uh, it's the first of its kind here in Saudi Arabia, like the motor show. You can compare it to the likes of the Geneva Motor Show or the Frankfurt Motor Show. Uh, so it's basically like that. Most of the manufacturers are here and they, are, uh, and they have launched a lot of new cars as well over here. So we'll be taking a look at that. Uh, besides uh, those things, there are a lot of few other activities that are going on and a lot of other uh, uh, third uh, third party uh, companies that have uh, brought their cars here to showcase that basically i'll be taking you on a full tour of the auto show and show you all the cars that are available in this show there are um, a few celebrities also that are here and uh, like basically ken block is here and then there's Juan gitten jr and the stuntman from fast and furious tokyo drift so that all is there if you want to like um, there is a passenger ride available with them so you have to pay them an extra fee or buy the tickets and then you are uh, you can go for a passenger ride in Ken Block's 1400 horsepower Mustang and uh, the Fast and Furious uh, drift cars so that's uh, that was the introduction if you're new to the channel guys do leave a like and do subscribe to the channel as well and do turn on your notifications because uh, most of the new cars that are launched over here I'll be putting out a first look and walk around for them as well so do stay tuned for that and now let's start with the tour Okay, so this is the entrance and right over here in the front we have uh, Dominic Toretto's or Dom's charger from Fast and Furious obviously you can see the number plate Toretto right over here so it is the stunt car from that film and uh, you can see you have that supercharger up on the top and it's basically the same car and you can see the wheels right over here on the side and the interior is also pretty much modified you have a racing seat and you can see the handbrake and stuff but overall it's a pretty nice looking uh, stunt car and here's how it looks from the back so pretty good looking and on this side this is the VIP lounge by the way but uh, Bentley have kept their cars over here for on display so we'll start with the Bentley over here so here we have the flying spur and let's take a look over here so this is the flying spur W12 it's a 2020 model so looks pretty good and then on this side we have the Continental GT it's a V8 model and it does look good in this blue since the cars were kept outside they're a bit dusty but I do like the paint job over here you can see the blue color and this is obviously the GT V8 and let's move over here so this is the flying spur V8 and you can see the nice red brake calipers right over here and I'll show you the details over here so this is the flying spur 22 model here so, and the interior looks pretty good as well I'll just show it to you so you can see we have a red interior and a white beige interior uh, it doesn't come clearly since the sun is there but I'll try to show it as nicely as possible that is it now there are some more cars over there and uh, there's a Bentega outside as well but now we'll move on over here so this is basically a wheel repair uh, shop or auto wheel repair specialist as you can see the name over there and they have quite a few cars inside so we'll take a look over there so you have Camaro right over here which looks pretty nice then you have a GT350 you have a Ford Raptor at the back then here you can see we have a Ferrari then at the back another Ford a pickup truck I think this is the Escort you have the Ford F-150 Lightning here you can see they have some customized helmets which look pretty good then you have the new Raptor right over there no I think that's the old one then we have another Raptor here you can see they are uh, displaying their brake discs which look pretty cool I especially like those ones over there then we have an engine I believe Yamaha engine but I'm not sure from where it might be a motorcycle engine then we have some suspension components right here then we have a Dodge Ram SRT10 by the way 
few more raptors and then we have a shelby at the back as well and we have some more customized parts so basically alloy will repair these guys will customize basically any part of the vehicle you want so you can see we have uh, camo brake discs or brake carapers then uh, the intake covers exhaust manifolds suspension everything they will modify it for you uh, there's one special thing over here you can see these brake discs we have louis vuitton brake discs as well so that's pretty unique but now that we're done on this side let's move on so guys i'm here at the ford stand and uh, in the auto wheel show and they have an experience center set where you can go for an off-road course in the bronco wild track or the f-150 light uh, f-150 hybrid uh, i have chosen to go into the bronco and i'll just show you which one so it's this bronco the blue one it's the wild track and we'll be going in that for an off-road course and hopefully i can cover all that uh, road course or off-road course in this video and i'll uh, try to show it as best as i can so guys i just came back from the bronco test drive or off-road course and it was really fun the way this guy drove with all the drifting and across all the dunes he drove pretty nicely i'll just leave some small clips from that course and uh, hopefully you'll understand how uh, it was uh, the bronco definitely is one of the best off-road uh, suvs out there and uh, i think this just proves that by the way i have actually made a uh, review on the Bron ford bronco i like a first look and walk around if you guys want to watch that the link will be in the description below so do go ahead and watch it and now let's move on to the next area where all the oem manufacturers are okay guys, so while heading towards the oem manufacturers there are two some vehicles over here which i wanted to show so this was where we had to register for the ford uh, bronco driving program outside you can see we have a raptor right over here and uh, this side we have a different type of f-150 which is obviously modified i'll just show you everything about it so this is called the pax power alpha one f-150 and you can see it has 770 horsepower and these are all the specifications of it so you can see it has a different style of front bumper with some hood scoops and uh, on the side over here you can see we have some different wheels which are pretty huge and you have some more modifications over here on the bed so you can see alpha by pax power and you have uh, two spare wheels at the back looks pretty nice you do have uh, some uh, bolder exhaust as well and you can see this is a platinum f-150 which they have converted so now and there's also a pretty nice looking matte black huracan right over here which looks pretty cool and now let's move on so moving on from that side and while going towards the manufacturer stand there are some classic cars right over here so let's check them out on the way so here we have a camaro ss pretty dusty due to it being outside we have another camaro ss uh, obviously two different ones but they look pretty cool we have a mustang then we have another shelby gt500 which looks pretty nice as well and here we have a chevelle here you can see we have another mustang and here we have a dodge viper a acr looks pretty mean uh, actually this is the first time i'm taking a look at a viper though looks pretty nice and that massive wing at the back and you have a nissan datsun which again is one of the best jdm cars so you can see this one is obviously modified does look pretty good it has a 5.7 liter ls1 engine though so it's obviously a v8 swapped you can see the interior looks pretty good and this is how it looks from the back now let's move on okay guys, so let's walk through here so this is also called the exhibition zone as well so inside there are some other lawns and everything else but outside they have kept some cars so this one is uh, a dodge i don't know the exact name of this so most of the classic cars i don't know then you have a modified silverado i look it looks like you have some jdm cars and other cars as well you can see this drift car right over here uh, it's a silly obviously it looks pretty nice and it looks like it's built for uh, drifting i'm not sure though but it looks pretty cool then let's move on we have another nissan over there and on this side we have a gt86 a veloster then we have a 350z another viper a lamborghini gallardo then it looks like a 911 a chrysler uh, this one looks like another nissan we have a bmw 3 series uh, we've got a jaguar f-type with an r8 right over there and we have uh, a mercury over here looks pretty nice and clean then we've got two massive trucks uh, this i think is the f-350 which is already a pretty huge truck but just look at this thing this is also pretty huge then here you can see we have uh, the r8 and we also have the supra looks pretty nice we've got an rx7 a mustang on this side we've got a beetle 
and we've got a Mustang over here which looks modified slightly with the body kit. We've got a Suzuki Jimny here which is modified to look like uh, basically Mercedes G-Wagon. So that's pretty cool to see. We've got a Cadillac right over here. Then we have some Infinities right outside. We've got an off-road car right here. We've got a Corvette. Then we've got some off-road cars all around. So now let's move on into this first uh, exhibition zone and we'll take a look at whatever's inside. Okay, so let's go into the next exhibition right over here. And we have a Lexus stand right over there. And uh, they will be launching on seven o'clock uh, the NX2022. But you can see there are three cars kept under the covers. Actually four cars, there's another one at the back. But there are some other cars right over here, which we can take a look at. So we've got a Porsche Cayenne, which I've actually made a video on. You can take a look at that in the, dis the link will be in the description. Then here we have a Range Rover, the standard Range Rover again in blue but uh, that's about it most of the cars are over there so let's move on okay so here we have another uh, stand but this is obviously not some automobile manufacturer this is Saudia uh, Saudia if you guys don't know this is uh, Saudi Arabia's national airline so Saudia is that they have kept some car one car over here though which I'll just show it to you later on so that's the car kept in the Saudia launch so it's a obviously it's a Corvette but it has the Saudia livery on it but uh, that's it but moving from that we have the Hongqi uh, stand right over here it's one of China's premium brands and they actually launched the new EHS9 right over here uh, which we'll be taking a look at later on but uh, I'll go through all the cars on this stand right now so here we can see the Hongqi HS7 right over here uh, it's uh, been on sale for quite a long time but the new car that has been launched in Saudi Arabia is this so it's called the EHS9 you can see all the uh, specs over here so it's it's a pure electric SUV by the way so you can see all these are the features of this car right over here uh, currently they don't have the price on it but uh, you can see it does look pretty good it is obviously related to the HS uh, H9 right over there so it's like an SUV version of that but pure electric looks pretty nice you have the famous Hongqi red flag over right over there and you can see that we have the charging port also looks pretty good from the side you can just see the stands on this it has air suspension because of that it's so low it looks pretty good as well the shape is also not something like a traditional SUV you do have nice flowing lines all around I do like this effect right over here and let's take a look from the back so this is how it looks from the back you have a nice light bar at the back with some uh, horizontal lines obviously no exhaust since it's an electric vehicle but uh, overall pretty good looking SUV okay, I'll just show you the interior from the outside though so obviously it's meant to be a luxury SUV so you can see we have a massive screen right out there and you have the other you have pretty nice luxury seats as well looks pretty good and let's move on obviously you have two seats at the back so it's meant to be a four seater only a high luxury but uh, that's it let's move on Okay, then here we have the Hongqi L5 and I think this is the flagship for the Hongqi brand itself. Uh, this is something the president of China travels in as well, I believe. It has a V12 and this car, I think the video does not do justice to it, but it is massive. It's pretty huge and uh, let me just show you from the side. This is actually a standard flagship which is the size of the 7 series and this is even larger than that. So you can just see how it looks from the side. You have the red flag right over there. You have some chrome wheels and obviously it looks it has a, rest, a retro style to it but uh, obviously it is pretty modern inside and i hope you can see the interior right about there i think uh, if it's uh, good enough for the president of china it is uh, pretty good as well i think jeremy clarkson reviewed one or saw one and he told it was pretty heavy as well but uh, you know you don't care uh, if the car looks like this though then we have the HS H9 over here, which like I told you is the Oxidan counterpart of that. And I've actually made a review on this. Uh, you can watch it in the playlist link, which I'll put down below. But uh, this is the flagship and uh, like it's the size of the 7 series. And it's meant, it's obviously not meant to compete with the 7 series in terms of the price. It undercuts that by a lot, but it does have the luxury and features like the 7 series or the Mercedes S class as well. You can see hints of Rolls Royce in the design as well and overall it is a pretty nice vehicle. So that's uh, the Hongqi HS5, it's a mid-size SUV and I have made a review on it. So if you want to watch it, uh, it will be in the link below. You can just go ahead and take a look at my playlist. So here's the Cadillac stand 
and the first product we see is the Cadillac Escalade in its luxury trim and then next to that we have the Cadillac CT4 that's like a 3 series competitor then we have the Cadillac Escalade Sport trim and uh, I have actually made a video on this one but that was in white color but this red color especially looks really nice then we move on to the Cadillac CT5 here in white it's a 5 series competitor and here we'll take a look at the interior so pretty nice and high quality then we come to the two stars of the cadillac stand the city 4 blackwing and the city 5 blackwing the city 4 blackwing as we all know has the twin turbo v6 and let's take a look at the specifications so i really like the interior with the beige color and the red stitching the sport seats did look really nice i didn't get a chance to sit inside due to the covid restrictions and stuff but uh, overall the car was pretty nice and now i'll just put up a compilation of the exhaust sounds of both the city 5 and the city 4. <laughs> So on the Infinity stand, we have the new QX55 and the QX60, which is based on the Nissan Pathfinder. So let's take a look at the QX55 first. And uh, the new design language that Infinity has is one of my favorites. All of the cars look really nice. So let's take a look at the side over here. Uh, there was a lot of music going on. That's why I have to do the voiceover. But now this uh, red paint color was really good. And the interior though not very impressive had very high quality materials with the Bose speaker system and the red leather interior look really nice and uh, you can see this is the coupier version of the QX50 so obviously that will have a problem with your headroom but the rear seat quality was also pretty good but uh, not a lot of space the rear design is pretty nice obviously when compared to the QX50 that uh, this one just looks a lot better then here we have the new 2022 QX60 which is based on the new Nissan Pathfinder and the new design language is a more evolved version of the Infinity design language and this rear section is the most similar to the Pathfinder on which it's based on. Let's have a look on the interior here or I mean in the interior. Uh, I really like the interior design of this new Infinity compared to that QX55. It also has the Bose speaker system but the seat design with that leather quality was really nice then we have that updated infotainment center screen then you have a digital driver's display and uh, overall that's it for the front let's have a look at the second row so this one has the captain's chairs as you can see i think we get a bench seat option as well and you have the same leather quality as in the front you have the same bow speaker system the manual privacy shared and i think uh, you get third row off seats as well the rear design of the qx60 is one of my favorites even though it does not have a full length light bar uh, the design does look really nice and smart uh, they did try to give them fake exhaust design with those uh, chrome things on the bumper but <laughs> we can forgive them for that and overall i think it's a smart looking suv with good enough luxury features and i think it's a good buy and now let's move on to the next exhibition okay so let's go into the next exhibition right over here and you can see we have the shangan and peugeot brands right over here for those of you watching outside and don't know what shangan is shangan is a chinese brand and i'll be going through all the cars available in the peugeot stand and the shangan stand and all the other brands available in under this exhibition so here's the 2022 peugeot 5008 great looking family suv so here are the details and the trims available and down below you have the price as well from the side also it looks pretty good but let's take a look on the interior uh, in the video it does look like it does look like brown but but it's uh, red you can see we have some wood finishes you have the standard Peugeot design with the digital eye cockpit the seat looks good and uh, Let's take a look at the rear or the second row. Similar seats with the bench seating. And you also have the third row right behind. So basically it's a seven-seater. And now let's move on. So here's the 2008 
and those tail light design are pretty nice plus this paint option was really good this orange metallic and it looked really nice in the lighting so the 2008 is a small hatchback style crossover the alloy wheel design was really nice and it did have a slight coupe design so here's the interior familiar Peugeot design some carbon fiber trim on the sides and uh, it did not have full leather seats it had some cloth inserts in the middle but overall pretty good quality materials in the inside then let's uh, take a look at the rear seats it's a small crossover so don't expect uh, much space but it did have a similar quality in terms of the materials so here's the front of the 2008 again familiar pojo design with those three leds and the fang like uh, led drl which goes all the way to the down and here are the details of the 2008 with the trim levels and the price as well so overall a pretty nice hatchback crossover and here's the 208 on which the 2008 is based on so basically the same car but one is a crossover and one's a hatchback so the front design is the same and here are the details for the 208 with the trims and all that stuff and pretty reasonable as well so this one is the top of the line gt trim and this yellow paint did look really nice with the uh, uh, larger alloy rims and uh, let's take a look at the interior so the interior is the same as the 2008 with same materials and design language and uh, obviously it's a small hatchback don't expect much space especially if you're a tall guy small person should be fine and the rear design i really like though uh, it does not have a lot of straight edges or straight lines it's more curvier in design and I think it suits the hatchback pretty well. And now let's move on. So here's the Shangan stand. And the first car is a pickup truck that's like a rival to the Toyota Hilux. Then here we have the Shangan Altswin. It's like a rival to the Toyota Yaris. Then next we have the Shangan Iado. It's like a Toyota Corolla rival. And this is the CS35 Plus like a honda hrv rival and for 22 model year they have given light bars both front and rear and it did look really nice then this is the cs 75 plus so it is something like a toyota raw 4 size maybe and here's the interior uh, the seats were really nice and uh, high quality in terms of the leather material and uh, all the dashboard displays were also nice and crisp so here are the rear seats and uh, again you can see it's a pretty spacious suv and it has a full length panorama roof and here's how it looks from the back we have quad exhausts and uh, those tail lights look really nice so on the shangan stand there were two new vehicles uh, this is called the uni k and this one specially reminded me of the porsche cayenne especially from this side and that rear uh, angle you can just see there and even all the rims and uh, now we'll take a look at the rear even the rear light bar reminded me of the porsche cayenne and it had pretty huge quad exhaust so you can see we have retractable door handles uh, just like a, a land rover and here's the interior so pretty high quality materials it did have sony speakers though uh, first time i've seen them in a car and uh, the seats were also pretty nice and high quality and the sony speakers were in the headrests as well you can see the digital drivers display and the center screen was pretty thin but uh, overall the cabin was pretty nice so this is the shangan unity and if the uni k was porsche cayenne size this was more of a bmw x4 size and uh, on the whole of the shangan stand this was my favorite car the light design was really nice so up top that's the led drl and from the side angle you can see those alloy wheels look really good and uh, it does not have a very coupe shape like the x4 but uh, it does look really nice and uh, let's take a look from the rear uh, the tail light design was really nice and even the exhaust shape was pretty unique uh, you can just take a look over there you can say it's kind of a triangle uh, but uh, overall i think this was the best looking car on the shangan stand then at the toyota stand we had the gazoo racing livery on the toyota supra the land cruiser gr sport the 2022 fortuner then the 2022 compact suv toyota race and the standard land cruiser then we had some electric concept 
like uh, which could help the disabled people like the one attached to the wheelchair and this one was uh, i think it's meant as a motorcycle replacement because it's a single seater then we had this uh, electric concept vehicle uh, i think it's called the lq it was uh, funky looking uh, but uh, cool at the same time then there was the toyota mirai which is a future in japanese uh, this is the hydrogen fusel vehicle from toyota uh, and i do like the design of this uh, second generation mirai the first generation was uh, basically a prius but uh, this one does look really nice especially this blue color the rear design is my favorite personally because of that sloping roof line uh, and the rear tail light design uh, but uh, that's all on the toyota stand and let's move on to the next stand so here's china's gsc motors and this is the full size uh, gn8 minivan and this is the full size suv gs8 then this is the raw 4 sized gs5 this is the honda hrv sized gs4 then this is a uh, electric uh, concept named Enlight. The back is especially the best looking angle with the Venturi tunnels. And this is the name. And this is a Camry sized uh, GS6 sedan. And this is their sports sedan named the MPOW. The color was really nice. This is how it looks from the back. It has quad exhaust. And now we'll move on to the next stand. So this is the MG stand or Morris Garage stand. And uh, the first car at this stand is their full size RX-8 SUV. Then we have the MG GT compact sport sedan style. Then this is the MG ZS compact SUV. Then this is the MG6 trophy edition. You can think of it like a mild sport sedan. Uh, and this green color was really nice and this is how it looks from the back it had actual exhaust and a roof spoiler and now on to the next stand so this is best tune another chinese company and this is their camry size sedan and from the front this is how it looks and uh, this is the side profile and from the back it reminds me of the kia k8 but it looks overall pretty good this is their mid-size SUV called the T77 and this is the front design which is uh, pretty good. The yellow paint especially looks really good. Then this is the side profile which is uh, pretty good as well and this is how the rear of the car looks with a full length tail light. So this is their full size SUV the T99 and you can see it has a pretty huge grille and it has those 10 spoke alloys which look really nice side profile overall is pretty nice as well this is the rear with a full length light bar pretty good looking suv overall and now let's move on to the next stand so here we are at the kia stand and the first car is the 2022 kia cerato and the 2022 k8 both of which i've made a video on you can watch it in the playlist link down below then we have the 2023 Kia Sportage and uh, I'll be making a first look video on that. Then we have the 22K5, then the Sorento, then we have the Seltos, then we have the Telluride and the Carnival. Then in the corner, there were these three cars, the K5, the Sorento and the Telluride with uh, something called the Auto Signature from Kia, uh, as you can see over there, the Auto Signature. So they were basically mildly modified vehicles like in the case of the telluride here you can see it had more uh, off-road oriented tires and different rims then in the sorento you can see it had a bit more uh, sportier design body kit you can see we had the carbon fiber boot lit spoiler then we had some more carbon fiber parts around the rear bumper and a diffuser as well uh, we had some really good looking rims with the red brake calipers we had a red strip uh, uh, like a basically coach line going around the side and a js logo on the side even though i didn't know what did uh, that stand for then at the front we had a carbon fiber front splitter as well then there were similar modifications to the k5 as well all these modifications uh, suited the k5 a lot better you can see that uh, carbon fiber front splitter then these uh, rotiform wheels which look really good with the yellow brake calipers. Uh, you had a side skirt in carbon fiber with the yellow pin striping. And there was this uh, boot lit spoiler uh, with this yellow pin striping. 
and uh, K K5 JS written at the back. And you also had uh, the carbon fiber rear diffuser as well. That's all the modification on the ex exterior. There were some modifications in the interior as well. So you, here you can see uh, the black and yellow theme continues. There were some carbon fiber inlays uh, with the suede material uh, on the door side and more carbon fiber on the interior. These seats look really good with this, especially with the black and yellow combination. But uh, that's all there was to show on the Kia stand. So here we are at the Chevrolet stand and the first vehicle you can see is the Silverado Trail Bros uh, in this uh, metallic blue color, which uh, looks really good by the way. So the Trail Bros is like uh, the off-road oriented variant of the Silverado. And you can see that by the uh, off-road uh, tires on it. And now let's move on to the next vehicle. So here's the 2022 Volt and I really like the design of it. Obviously no grill because it's an electric SUV and the side profile is also pretty good as well. And here's the charging port. The rear design is nice and clean, no fussy lines and stuff. And now the next vehicle. Next on the Chevrolet stand was this compact SUV called the Groove, the new Tahoe and the Captiva. So next to the Chevrolet stand was the GMC stand where this was the main showstopper. This is the GMC Sierra Harley Davidson edition. And you can see it has the black color or paint with the orange accents all around. One thing I did like a lot was uh, you can see the grill had Harley Davidson shaped or logo shaped cutouts and on the side or the front fender you had the Harley Davidson logo and you had these 24 inch rims which looked really cool. Then you can check out the interior right here. So the door trim was standard and you had the Bose speakers but the main change was here. You could see the seats with the orange stitching with the Harley Davidson written inside. You had the metallic dials for the instruments and you had your win number with the Harley Davidson logo as well. And you have Harley Davidson sill plates as well. And this is how the bed looks. Uh, you have a carpet inside instead of the standard bed paint liner. And you also have the Harley Davidson logo as well. And now on to the next stand. So this is the Haval brand, which is also a Chinese brand. And uh, this is their flagship called the H9. Uh, you can compare it to something like the Land Cruiser Prado because the side profile is pretty similar to it as well. Then this is the Jolion. You can think of it like a compact luxury crossover. Uh, this uh, That was the front design. And this is how it looks from the side. A pretty good looking SUV, I would say. And uh, this is how it looks from the back. Overall, I think it's a pretty good looking SUV or crossover. So this is the Haval H6. It's uh, comparable in size to a RAV4. Uh, the looks are pretty good. And even from the side, it looks pretty nice as well. And uh, let's take a look at the interior over here. And for something that competes with the RAV4, and it also costs quite a bit less than the RAV4 as well. I think the interior is a lot better than the Toyota. Uh, especially the dashboard over here you can see we have uh, digital screens for the driver and the center screen as well and uh, this can easily be placed into the luxury crossover segment as well and it had a full length panorama this is the rear design you have a full length light bar and overall a pretty good looking suv so this is the newly launched Haval Dargo. Uh, you can think of it of something like a uh, value for money Ford Bronco or Jeep Wrangler you can see those hints in the design as well. You have those round LED headlights, uh, pretty chunky front arches, like basically you have that body cladding and uh, pretty uh, meaty tires as well. Uh, but obviously they're more road oriented than off-road oriented. And you have that uh, grab handle on the passenger side just for the off-road touch. But uh, the dash design is pretty good and pretty unique as well. And uh, you have those orange accents all around, which you only get, by the way, if you choose this orange paint. Uh, other than that, if you go for any other paints, you get a plain black interior. And this is how it looks from the back with those chunky bumpers. And uh, that's it. So this is the Aura ES11. It's a small electric hatchback. And uh, in the front, you can see hints of mini with those round headlights. Uh, the side design is pretty nice and cute. The color was really nice though and this is how it looks from the back. Pretty funky but uh, cool at the same time uh, and that's all from the Howell stand. So I did go to the launch of the NX 2022 which was in the evening 
this particular one caught my eye a lot because of the color uh, it was uh, really good and it was shining a lot on the light i tried to take as many shots as possible from around the car just to showcase the new design but it was uh, pretty chaotic so i couldn't get a comprehensive video of the car itself uh, maybe i'll be able to get my hands on one pretty soon so i'll make a full review at that time and uh, i think that's all there is to show in this uh, motor show and if you enjoyed the video guys do leave a like and do subscribe to the channel as well and do turn on your notifications so that you'll be the first ones to know when i upload later videos pretty soon i will be making first walk first look videos of the kia sportage 2023 and this nx22 as well so stay tuned guys stay safe stay healthy and bye bye